Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to make keto meatloaf. Now, I have to be honest, I grew up in a Russian family, I didn't grow up eating meatloaf, but I've tried plenty at restaurants. And when I met my husband, he told me that meatloaf is one of his favorite meals. So when we went low carb over a decade ago, I knew that a keto meatloaf recipe was one of the first things I had to make. And since I posted it on my website a few years ago, it has become one of the most popular low-carb comfort food recipes on my site. And for good reason. It's easy to make with simple ingredients. The meat is juicy and tender. The glaze is simple and sweet. I'm definitely a meatloaf fan now. So most meatloaf ingredients are naturally keto-friendly, except the binder. Most meatloaf recipes are made with breadcrumbs, which are high in carbs. So instead, I'm using wholesome yum almond flour for my binder. The texture is really fine, makes a really nice consistency in your meatloaf, and it makes the perfect binder. I'll link down below where you can get it on my website or on Amazon, but if you like, if you don't want to use almond flour, another good alternative is pork rinds. The texture is a little bit different with those. I personally prefer almond flour, but either will work and the amount will be exactly the same. So let me show you how to make my low carb meatloaf. And at the end, I'll show you the perfect keto side dish to serve with it. Let's do this. We're going to start by mincing eight cloves of garlic. Now, this is how I like to do it. So I smash a knife on the top of the clove and then the peel will come right off. If you have another trick for peeling garlic, let me know in the comments down below. And after this, we're just gonna slice the garlic clove super thinly, just like this, and then use a rocking motion using your other hand for leverage to mince the garlic as finely as you like. If you want to, you can also use jarred garlic, but I love the flavor of fresh. Now I'm going to dice half of a large onion. So cut off the ends first, and then we're going to slice it in half and remove the peel. And now I'm gonna show you how I like to dice onions so that all the pieces come out pretty uniform. So instead of cutting up and down, what I'm gonna do is cut radially, kind of in a circle, going around just like this. And then after that, move in the opposite direction and just cut up and down. This yields much more even pieces. Now we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna go ahead and mix up all our ingredients. One little trick I have is we're gonna mix everything else first before we add the meat. That way we avoid overworking the meat. So I've added the onion and garlic in there, and then I'm adding three ounces of tomato paste and half a cup of wholesome yum blanched almond flour. And I'm adding two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This does have a tiny bit of sugar in it, but it adds so much flavor, and the carbs in the final meatloaf are still gonna be low, so I highly recommend it. I'm also adding a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I'll link the homemade version I have down below, but feel free to use store-bought if you like. And two teaspoons of sea salt. That's one teaspoon per pound of meat that we're going to add later, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Last thing, two large eggs. You can crack them directly into the bowl. You don't even have to whisk them separately. It's all gonna mix together anyway. And now we're gonna mix this mixture together, like I said, without the meat at first. That way you're stirring the meat less so it doesn't get too tough. Now we can add our meat. I'm adding two pounds of ground beef. I like 85-15 ground beef, so it's not too lean or too fatty. If you like, you can also use ground turkey or even ground chicken. And once we've added that, what I'm gonna do is fold this a little bit with a spatula first, just to help it mix together. And then once you have it mostly uniform, I like to use my hands a little bit to mix it fully. Be careful not to overwork the meat because again, that's gonna make your meatloaf too tough and nobody wants that. Be sure to wash your hands after you've been touching the meat and then we can go ahead and transfer this to a baking dish. I used to make this meatloaf in a loaf pan and you definitely can, but I now prefer a baking dish because it's going to lead to better caramelized edges. It's not gonna steam as much like it would in a loaf pan. So go ahead and shape it into a loaf, the shape that you like, just like this. Be careful not to compress the meat too much because otherwise, again, might become tough, but it's kind of a balance because if you don't compress it enough, it can crack. And as you'll see later in the video, mine does crack just a little bit. So you could compress it a little more than I have here. Now, here's my little trick to perfect keto meatloaf. I use this probe thermometer. I'll link it down below. 
So what I'm gonna do is insert this into the center and it's actually gonna be in there while the meatloaf bakes. I set it to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll beep once it gets to that stage. It won't be done at that point, but that's when we're going to apply the glaze. And it doesn't look very pretty when it comes out at this point. That's one of the reasons you need the glaze. Plus, let's face it, the glaze is sweet and delicious. If you wanna make it even simpler, you don't have to take out the meatloaf in the middle of baking and just add the glaze at the very end. It also comes out much more shiny that way if appearance is a factor for you. I've decided to go ahead and put it on in the middle here, and then I'm gonna return it to the oven. This time, I'm setting the thermometer to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and it'll rise a few more degrees while it rests at the end, so it will reach 165 when it's done. This is going to take another 25 to 45 more minutes. It really varies depending on how thick you made your meatloaf. Once it comes out of the oven, you're going to wanna to let your meatloaf rest for about 10 minutes. This is going to let the temperature increase to 165 degrees. So mine is at 163 right now as I took it out and it's going to rise a few more degrees as it rests. Once your meatloaf has rested in the pan for a little bit, you can go ahead and transfer it. It's a little difficult. I like to use this huge turner, super convenient for this. I'll link it down below. And then you can go ahead and transfer it to a platter. And I like to add a little sprinkle of parsley. All right, we're ready to slice. Keto meatloaf does tend to be a little fragile. That's one of the reasons that resting is so important. But just cut gently, just so that we don't get it falling apart on us. There we go. It helps to use a serrated knife, just like you would a loaf of bread. And just look at how tender that is. This smells so good. Mine did crack just a little bit on the top. That happens sometimes. Personally, I don't care. If you want to be extra careful, you can cook this in a loaf pan. That never happens there, but I like the caramelization that we get by cooking it without the loaf pan. And I happen to have my favorite keto mashed cauliflower here. This makes the best side dish for keto meatloaf. Let's make up a plate and a big old slice of meatloaf. And if this falls apart on me, honestly, I don't care because it is just so tender. And there it goes. And a little sprinkle of parsley because I like my food pretty. I'll link the video for the cauliflower down below for you. Okay, I'm so ready to try this. It's so tender, I don't even need a knife for this. That was amazing. Juicy and flavorful, and I can taste the sweet glaze on there. Try this recipe, you guys. You will not be disappointed. If you make this keto meatloaf, leave me a comment. I love hearing what you guys think. And snap a photo, post it with hashtag wholesome yum so that I can see it. See you next time on Wholesome Yum, where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes, all with 10 ingredients or less.